In this video, I'm gonna show you how to control your smart LED lights with a light switch. Let's break it down. So when I started this project, I admittedly thought it would be a lot easier than it turned out to be. I tried about four different options and had mixed success at best. So the first option I tried was using a regular light switch and a smart light bulb. And while this worked, there was a pretty big delay between the light bulb booting up, connecting to the Wi-Fi network and everything like that before the WLED strip would even turn on. So that really wasn't gonna work out. Now sticking with a regular light switch, you can always use one of these adapters that will convert your light socket into an outlet, but I imagine this isn't the solution most of you are looking for. So that takes me to my third option, which is using a Wi-Fi smart light switch. But we ran into the same issue of having a delay from whenever the light switch is registered turning on before the WLED strip turns on itself. But the thing that I found to be the most consistent, most reliable, and the quickest was using this device. This is a smart relay from a company called Shelly. You install this behind your light switch and it turns your regular light switch into a smart light switch. Now the possibilities of what you can do with this thing are pretty limitless, but we're only gonna talk about this one feature and that's controlling our WLED lights with our light switch. Now, for demonstration purposes, I made this little demo WLED setup. Don't judge it, it's not gonna win any sort of beauty contest, I get that, but it's just to show that my WLED strip isn't connected to any sort of power, it's connected to this battery, so there's no trickery going on here, it's all done wirelessly. Well, that's not too bad, is it? I mean, I was just start lighting my videos with some WLED strips that might make things easier, actually. So the first thing you need to do, obviously, is connect your Shelly to your light switch. Now, the wiring method that you're gonna use is gonna vary based on when your house is built, where your house is built, whether you're using one light switch, multiple light switches, a dimmer light switch, look, there are like a hundred different options for how to wire up a Shelly. My recommendation is to go to their YouTube channel and look for a video that applies to your situation. They have a ton of different tutorials and they're actually pretty easy to follow along with. And then you need to connect your Shelly switch to your Wi-Fi network, which you can just do that through the Shelly app. It's pretty simple to do. And then we need to set up our MQTT broker. Now I'm gonna be using Home Assistant and Mosquito. And if you don't know what MQTT is, that's totally fine, as long as you have Home Assistant up and running. And if you don't, I have a video going over that on how to get yourself up and running in less than 20 minutes. Now you don't have to, but now that your Shelly is connected to the Wi-Fi network, you can go to your Home Assistant integrations and add your Shelly there. Personally, I recommend doing this, that way you can have multiple ways of connecting to your Shelly if for some reason the MQTT broker isn't working. Now before we set up our MQTT broker, I'm gonna create a user, and we'll talk about why here in a second. First, we're gonna go down to configuration, people and zones, and add user. I'm gonna name this user with the display name of MQTT user and a login name of MQTT underscore user. And I'll set a secure password. And I'm gonna check can only log in from local network. Now let's add our MQTT broker. Let's go back to configuration and go to add-ons, backups, and supervisor. Then we'll click on add-on store and search for Mosquito. Press install, and once it's installed, we'll go to the configuration. And then under logins, remove the brackets, and then type in dash, username, and the username that you gave, and then we'll type in on the next line, password, and the password you gave. And start the integration. Now go back to your integrations tab and locate your Shelly. And when you click on that, you can click on visit device. And from here, we're gonna press the internet and security button and toggle down Advanced Developer Settings. Here, we will enable Action Execution via MQTT. Now, you might get a warning about not being able to use the Shelly Cloud feature, and that means you won't be able to control your device through the Shelly Cloud whenever you're not connected to the Wi-Fi network. But if you can remotely access your Home Assistant account, then that's not really much of a bother. Enter in the MQTT username and password that we set up earlier. And for the server, that's your Home Assistant server IP address. And if you don't know your Home Assistant server IP address, you can find that under Configuration, Add-ons, Backup, and Supervisor. In the Host tab, you'll see your Home Assistant IP address. But we don't want the slash 24. Make sure it ends in your port number, which is likely 1883. I keep everything the same, but I changed the max QoS to 1 and disable the cloud service if it didn't do so automatically for you and reboot the Shelly. Now we need to make sure our Shelly is talking to our MQTT broker. Let's go to Configuration and Integrations. 
and let's go to our Mosquito Broker integration. And click on Configuration. And under Listen to a Topic, type in Shelly's slash pound and start listening. Now you may not see anything here and that's totally fine. We need to publish a packet. So we're gonna type in Shelly's slash command as the topic and announce as the payload and click publish. Now you should see a flurry of data coming in. So let's go ahead and press stop listening and scroll down until we find ID followed by Shelly switch and a string of letters and numbers. Let's copy this whole part. And then we're gonna open our home assistant file editor of choice and then go to our configuration.yaml file. And if you haven't already, I recommend adding in this line here. As you begin to add more and more switches, your configuration file can get pretty cluttered. So this is a nice way of keeping everything nice and organized. And you can do the same thing for switches, groups, and lights. It'll have everything on a whole separate page rather than just in your configuration file. So if you haven't already done so, let's add a folder called switches. And within that folder, we're going to add a new file called mqtt-shelly.yaml, or really whatever you want to call it as long as it ends in .yaml. So in this file, I'm first going to paste my Shelly ID before I lose it. And check the description of this video. I have the lines of code that you're going to want to copy, and let's paste that here. And if you're using a Shelly 2.5, you'll want to paste this part twice, one for each relay you do need to change where it says Relay 0 to Relay 1 on the second part. Now, there's a lot going on here that we're going to want to change. For the name, I recommend changing it to whatever your Shelly is controlling. In my example, I have a Shelly 2.5 controlling my living room fan and my living room spots. And then we need to enter in the unique ID. I'm going to use Living Room Fan Shelly and Living Room Spots Shelly. And then we need to go to State Topic, and after Shelly's slash, we need to enter in our Shelly ID. And same thing with command topic and JSON attributes topic. And if you're using a Shelly 2.5, pay attention to which switch you're using for relay 0 and which one for relay 1. But good news, if you get it backwards, you can always just swap it later. And once you're done, remove the Shelly ID that you pasted at the top. Hit save, and let's check our home assistant configuration by going to configuration, setting, and check configuration. If everything is good, then you can restart your home assistant server. And if you want to see everything you can do with your Shelly device over MQTT, the Shelly website actually has a pretty good write-up on everything that their devices can do. But be warned, it's a pretty long read. Link in the description for that. And once your Home Assistant server is back up and running, let's go to Developer Tools, and under Entity, type in switch dot, followed by the unique ID we gave our device. So I'll search switch dot living underscore room underscore spots. And then we should be able to see the state. And it's a good idea to double check your state by toggling your switch. If it's wrong, you may once again have the wrong channel. Okay, so assuming everything is working so far, we can now create our automation. Let's go to Configuration, Automations and Scenes. I'll create a new automation and I'll call it Turn On WLED Demo Light. Under Trigger, I'll select State, and then my entity will be the device ID, so switch.living underscore room underscore spots. And then under Two, I'll type on. And then my action will be device, which will be my WLED demo light. And then my action will be turn on with my brightness set to 100. I'll hit save and now when I flip on my light switch, my living room lights come on and so does my WLED demo light. But now to have the switch turn off my WLED light, I'll just duplicate this automation and I'll change the name from turn on to turn off. And I'll change the two under trigger to off and then I'll set my WLED demo light to off. And with that guys, we're finally done. If you have any questions, feel free to leave a comment down below or check out the written guide for step-by-step -step instructions. But with that, I'll see you in the next one.